Hey church, this is Friday, November the 1st, um, and this year is flying by, and we are doing the week wrap-up. Um, as the sun goes down, we are entering into Sabbath, so um, this is just the wrap-up before Sabbath tomorrow. Um, it's been a fantastic week. Um, Things have been really good, and I attribute that to just being in the Word um, and not missing a day and not being perfect because we're not perfect, but um, just spending that time with Jesus and just allowing Him to um, still work on us, clear us out slowly, um, and help us not to constantly fall back into um, our old self. So. I'm just thankful for that. So, um, I'm going to pray us in. We're still reading from themes in the Gospel of John. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. Thank you for helping us get through the day. Thank you for all the blessings that you just give us daily, all the things that we need, um, all the things that we didn't even know we need, and, not, and just not giving us everything we want just because we're asking for it, but just giving us exactly what we need. And I definitely appreciate that. So I just ask that you open our hearts and our minds and our ears to your word and what you have to say and what you want to teach, teach us. And I just ask that you give me the words to speak to speak, and the thoughts to think. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So this week we were talking about the Samaritans specifically the woman out of Samaria and there's going to be some discussion questions but we are just going to do just some quick questions that should spark you to think for um, for Bible studies with your group or um, you know for church or whatever it is that you're doing so it says to read Ellen G White's at Jacob's well pages 183 to 195 in the desire the desire of ages and this is just for further thought. So it says, as soon as she had found the Savior, uh, the Samaritan woman brought others to him. She proved herself a more effective missionary than his own disciples. The disciples saw nothing in Samaria to indicate that it was an encouraging field. Their thoughts were fixed upon a great work to be done in the future. They did not see that right around them was... A harvest to be gathered but through the woman whom they despised a whole city were brought to hear the Savior she carried the light at at once to her countrymen this woman represents the working of a practical faith in Christ every true disciple is born into the kingdom of God as a missionary he who drinks of the living water becomes a fountain of life the receiver becomes a giver. Um, the grace of Christ in the soul is like a spring in the desert, welling up to refresh all and making those who are ready to perish eager to drink of the water of life. So just like I was speaking about, yeah, about yesterday where it says the receiver becoming a giver. Yeah, so you reap and then you sow. So... Um, we just we have to keep that in mind so for discussion questions um, in class go over your answers to Sunday's final question be brutally honest about it what are the taboos and prejudices found in your culture that can indeed hamper your own witness to others so um, I mean I don't know if it's strictly with black culture or um, or anything like that but I just know like um, there's a lot of things that the black culture has been um, taught traditionally over the years that if you go against those like um, traditions and cultures and things like that you could be frowned upon uh, I also know going to church on Saturday most people confuse with um, Jehovah Witness so that's always um, a great discussion or 
you know, a, a weird discussion depending on how they look at you because sometimes they look at you with um, disgust because not everybody likes Jehovah Witnesses. So um, I think that's like a couple of taboos. Uh, just n there's no, nothing tough about church or being in church and things like that. So um, sometimes that's frowned upon. It says, why do you think Jesus got such a warm reception? This is discussion question two. Why do you think Jesus got such a warm reception among the Samaritans in contrast to the peop to the reception among his own people? I feel like sometimes um, our own people have a sense of um, entitlement. So I feel like his own people felt a sense of entitlement because he was already Jewish. So they just felt like, well, he's Jewish and the message is only for us and we're the only ones that can benefit from this versus, excuse me, versus the people of Samaria who have spent their lives being looked down upon. And, you know, those are the people that Jesus goes after the ones people turn their noses up at because those people are just as important um, as the people who are doing well because we're all his children. And so Jesus was a real life manifestation of um, just respecting everyone um, all the time. It didn't matter rich, old. He was just like, you know, uh, perfection when it came to, you know, people and relations, relationships. So it says, put yourself in the place of the Sam Samaritan woman. A total stranger comes and lets her know that he is aware of her deepest secrets. How could anyone, much less a stranger, have known these things? No wonder she was impressed by Jesus. What should this story tell us about how the Lord knows everything about us, even the deepest, darkest secrets that he treated, that he treated her, oh, I'm sorry, and yet what does the way he treated her say to us about how he wants to deal with us, even when he knows our secrets, and comforts can draw out, and what comforts can we draw out from this truth? So, I think a couple things here where... Um, like I, I think I said a couple lessons before that even though he pointed out her, her flaws and her deepest, darkest secrets that he did not come to condemn, you know, he came to save. And so him shining a light and like pulling out her, her shortcomings and, um, and all of those things were not, um, how do you say they were not. Uh, can't think of the word I'm looking for. with malice okay they were not it was not like he was trying to beat her down or do like a gotcha um, or or anything like that it was more of you know he's like hey I see this in you but I can also help you clear this out so sorry my mouth was dry so it's just even though Jesus tells us the truth about ourselves it's not to hurt us I have yet to see anything that Jesus or God has done um, to hurt us in a sense of like hey I'm trying to teach you about you I'm trying to teach you how to not be these these terrible things that you're being I'm trying to teach you how to not run into the same things over and over and over again but we're so um, focused on earth that it's just like we're always questioning why is Jesus letting that happen why did Jesus let this happen to me um, this that and the third so let's see Number four, what themes in the Gospel of John that we have studied thus far are, are found in Jesus' ministry 
to the Samaritan woman at the well. Well, I just think that we know Jesus' mission never has never changed from day one, right? He knew God's will was for him to die on the cross to save us. He knew that from the beginning. And he also knew that it's God's will to try to save us from ourselves. So literally, um, that's what he spent his entire life doing. And along the way, he became upset with some people doing some things in his father's house. Um, but he was, he never strayed from the mission. He never strayed from the will of God. And so, um, the themes in the gospel of John about him, um, just, just like help build this foundation of Jesus's character, his real character and what it is, um, what it what it meant for us what what how we should accept this what this huge gesture gesture that he's done for us um versus taking it for granted so um there's no right or wrong to these answers it's just to spark debate it's not really debate but just to spark questions amongst each other and and talk about how you see and that's the thing about doing these Bible studies online is that I don't always get comments from people about anything, but um, out there in the world, you're going to get different perspectives and, and things like that. So I think sometimes that can be beneficial too, to kind of learn from some people who may have been around for a while, or even some people who have picked up the Holy Spirit, you know, really, really fast. So uh, I just think that we all... Um, have this 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 obligation to um, share with one another and um, and just be there. So, um, with that being said, it's a it's a short one, but just these are just my opinions about you know these questions and stuff like that. But I just hope that um, I sparked some. Some questions that you guys can ask yourselves, that you can ask each other at church, that you can just, you know, um, be a part of in general. So, <sighs> thank you, God, for what a wonderful week this was. And just thank you for your blessing, you lo your love, and your grace. And we just thank you that you're working everything out for us. And I just thank you that it's a lot of the times that you just save us from ourselves so thank you lord for being you um thank you for just blessing me thank you for blessing my family thank you for blessing my boys and blessing my daughter and just thank you just thank you for everything that you do in jesus name we pray amen until next time church